Now let's come to Parliament of Ghana as we shift attention to the House, where for the first time in the history of the Fourth Republic, a person other than the Speaker or his deputies presided over the House. Sunyani East Member of Parliament, Kwesi Amiya Chairman, uh, presided over the House today, clerk to Parliament Zero, Kwabrensia, announced the unavoidable absence of both the Speaker and his two deputies. Parliamentary correspondent Kweku Asante joins me in the studio as we try to unpack this particular matter. Kweku, so, I mean, this is in the standing orders. Yes. But how come the Speaker, the two deputies are all not in town? In fact, all of them were in town yesterday. So this morning was a bit of a surprise when a clerk to Parliament came into the House and announced that both of them, both, both the three gentlemen are all not in the country. And he did not give reasons exactly why these three persons have all left town. But the speculation also in Parliament is that Parliament wanted to test this angle in the standing orders. Because since 1993 that Parliament has been sitting, there has always been the Speaker himself or his two deputies that have presided over the House, despite the standing orders giving room for a member presiding, so that when these three persons are not there, then that person can preside. In fact, in the last meeting, there was an event at the Pentacles Convention Center, and the Speaker and his deputies were all supposed to go. And so the House had to decide, what do we do? Eventually, the Speaker of Parliament directed that because of that, the House was not going to sit. So that because he and his deputies were going for that event, it was not possible for Parliament to sit. So MPs and the leadership have been exploring means to forestall that so that in the future, if the Speaker and his deputies are not there for whatever reason, the House can do business. Under the new standing orders and the old, it all gave provisions to that. Under this um, uh, standing order 12.1, it gives you room that if the Speaker or his deputies are unavoidably absent, the clerk to parliament shall preside over the sitting to elect one of the members of parliament to do that. But today there was no need for an election because both caucuses mm -hmm. seem to have agreed on something. The majority chief whip, Frank Anodon Pre, nominated Mr. Kosiami Yalshame, who is a four-time member of parliament, who in fact served in the, in, the, in the previous parliament as the majority chief whip. So he was the one the majority side nominated, the minority side backed that nomination, and because of that there was no need for an election and he unanimously was um, selected as the, as, the, as the person to preside over the House today. So let's, go, let, let, let's view the, 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 the situation in Parliament this morning. Yes, as well, um, in accordance with Order 12.4, whenever the Speaker, the first Deputy Speaker and the second Deputy Speaker are unavoidably absent, the clerk shall chair the sitting for the election of a member to preside at that sitting of the House as the member presiding. In accordance with this order, I would invite nominations for a member to preside, for the election of a member to preside. Thank you. I recommend the Honorable Akwesi and Mayor Chairman to preside as a member preside. Honorable Akwesi and Mayor Chairman is a member of parliament for Sunyani East. He's a fourth term member of parliament and he's also my immediate boss as a former majority chief whip. I so move. Right, Honorable um, Mr. Clark. Indeed, uh, uh, relying on order 12.4, my colleague has proposed our senior colleague, Honorable Amaya Ochene, on behalf of colleagues, to take the chair today. I second the motion and his proposal for Honorable Chairman to take the seat. As many as are in favor, say aye. As many as are against, say no. The eyes have it. Honorable Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
members who prayed. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to look with favor upon this parliament of the Republic of Ghana. Right, so that's your, your, your interim speaker for now. So, Kwaku, how did he perform? Well, he did perform quite creditably. Today, the House did not have a lot of business to do because of the new standing orders. MPs are going to Water Serene um, this weekend to go and do an orientation in terms of how things are supposed to pan. So, they did a business statement. There were some back and forth, a few issues raised, but a very senior member of parliament, having served for 16 years now, he has served in leadership before, so he really knows the rudiments of the house, how things should go. He did quite creditable, and he adjourned the house around 1 p.m. so that business will proceed next week, Tuesday. So basically, at 1 p.m., his job as speaker came to an end. Came to an end. He is, he is not entitled to do any other role. He's not, he's not the, the acting speaker. He just presided over the house. And as of now, the Speaker of Parliament is still the speaker, wherever he may be. And on Tuesday, if it so happens that all three of them are still not around, there will be another election if it's necessary, to appoint one of the persons to preside over the House. But today, Kwesi Amiyal Chebe stepped in. He has made history for the first time in the Fourth Republic, a member other than the Speaker or his two deputies presided over the House. Right. Let's just stay in Parliament because the, the effects from the uh, ministerial reshuffle is also something that we are, we are dealing with. Now, the NDC member of Parliament for South Dai, Roxy Nessin Dafiamekwa, is threatening to head to the Supreme Court if a number of reassigned ministers and deputies are not brought before parliament for prior approval, meaning they will have to be vetted. Roxanne Nelson of Yamepo argues the president letter stated that the ministers had been relieved of their duties and so any new appointment, even of the same person, must be subject to parliamentary approval. We will deal with this matter. And this is, this is, this is, this is quite strange. This is quite strange. Because the convention has always been that once you are a minister of state and you are yeah. vetted, you can just move to another ministry. Yes. It happened even during the NDC, NDC time. time. So Why is it now an issue? Yes. In fact, um, Roxy Nelson FM Echo relies on the press release by Eugene Ahin. And if you read that press release, it says, A, the President of the Republic, Nanado Danko Ekufado, has relieved the following ministers and deputy ministers of their portfolios in government with immediate effect. Meaning, at that time, they had, they been, had been removed. Removed from office. Mm -hmm. Roxy Nelson FM Echo's argument is that it means the president has sacked them at the time. And so if the president is even reappointing those same persons, then it must come to parliament for approval. But mind you, this is the press release. The letter that was written by the president, signed by himself to the speaker, did not have this. It just communicated that these are the persons I've nominated to take over certain ministerial offices, and these are the persons I've reassigned. So, the, so the, the, the communication to the speaker... It is the most important exactly. thing that, 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 that should be relied on. And in fact, Roxy Nelson, the FEMA Court, and Harun Edris, who had raised similar issues on the floor, had not seen that letter. But the press had benefit of seeing that letter. And so let's listen first to Roxy Nelson, the FEMA Court, make that argument on the floor, relying on the press release signed by Eugene Ahin, and not the letter from the president to the speaker. Let me anchor this matter within the premise of Article 81 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, Article 81 of the Constitution, the effect that the office of a Minister of State or a Deputy Minister shall become vacant if A, his appointment is revoked by the President. Mr. Speaker, the President issued a letter publicly indicating the number of ministers that he has, whose appointments he has revoked with immediate effect. Mr. Speaker, the, the meaning can only be that. Those number of ministers and the names of the ministers whose names appear on that release, they be immediately relieved of their post. But Mr. Speaker, a very strange happening. The, 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 the communication proceeded further to say that some five ministers whose names appeared among those who have been relieved of their post immediately, have rather been reassigned. Mr. Speaker, by operation of law, when the president says that he has revoked your appointment, you are no longer a minister of state. You are no longer a minister of state. And so there's no way the president can say 
that he is reassigning those persons. So I am saying on the authority of the constitution that those persons appointed will be revoked by the president. But the, pre but the constitution mandates him to reappoint them. It's to the parliamentary scrutiny of this house. This court is not here that Mr. Speaker will proceed, will proceed to the Supreme Court for interpretation. So, former Minority Leader Harun Idrisu also had similar concerns on the floor of Parliament. I would have wished that the table office gave me a copy of the President's reshuffle to this House. We are speaker, there is a Supreme Court ruling which defines prior approval as term of art. Now, in the President's communication to Parliament, we need to have clarity on three important issues. A minister being moved to another ministry, having been approved by parliament as a minister, is an automatic seamless movement to that ministry. And Mr. Speaker, how does that sit with parliament's new standing orders of newly composed committees of parliament to consider those appointments? Then, Mr. Speaker, too, we need clarity to know, for instance, Minister for Finance, when does he assume full responsibility? So the words in the President's letter will have meaning for us. We need to know. If the President says that the appointment takes effect from 14 February, which is his Valentine reshuffle of a lay reshuffle of a lame dark president, we understand. But he must give us that effective 14 February all those ministers whose own is just a matter of shifting those chairs appropriately are dealt with in law. Then those that will be subjected to the appointments committee, which is the new appointments committee to be composed by parliament, we need to have clarity on it. So I was going to ask people if you have the present correspondent, share a copy with me so that we know the way the president used. So I'm still here in the studio with my colleague, uh, parliamentary correspondent, Koku Koku, I'm wondering how this matter was resolved. Well, the majority leadership had a fiery response. Alexander Fenyo Markin, who was in leadership today, the majority leader himself was not available at the time, responded and said that if you look at the totality of the president's letter to parliament, mm -hmm. you have to read that as a whole. And if you read it as a whole and you construe that as a whole, you would realize that the minority issues are simply baseless and that the president was within his right to have shifted positions within the ministerial list, move whoever he wants to move, and that those persons automatically take seats. And that, as we speak, Kojo Bonkuma is the Minister for Works and Housing. I mean, Adam is the Minister of, Minister of Finance and all that. And also responded directly to Ross and us in the Affirmative Court. He says he's at liberty to go to the Supreme Court, but he just won't get any success. Mr. Speaker, the, the basic rule of interpretation is that we look at the document as a whole. We don't have to disjointly read. When we disjointly read the document, we are likely to mislead those who are to listen to us. The president used one communication to communicate his intent and his decision. The words he used were relief that he has relieved them of their portfolio. Roxon, you would have to keep quiet and listen. That he has relieved them of their portfolio in government. And in the same case, the next paragraph, he again conveyed to us that these people have been reassigned. Anyway, you are free to go to the Supreme Court. Mr. Speaker, I won't belabor. Right, so I'm going to conclude with Kwaku on this matter. So Kwaku, what, is it a done deal or... Yeah, but as... Roxin is saying that there should be some... Kind Roxin of says right if the president does not respond, he will go to the Supreme Court. The majority leadership says he should go. But as far as parliament is concerned, the only persons they are going to vet are those people that have been now freshly appointed or those ones who have been promoted from deputy minister to ministers. Those ones have to be, those ones have to be vetted. And those are the ones that the appointed committee is now seized with. And still talking about reshuffle, Kwaku Kwatu, mm. the current chairman of the finance, finance committee, he used to be a deputy finance yeah. minister, has been explaining why he turned down his ministerial appointment. Yes. 
He has put out a one-page statement saying that, first, he's thankful to the president for the opportunity provided him to serve as deputy minister between 2017 and 2021, and also thankful and humbled by the knowledge that the president found him worthy to serve in the executive in the recent reshuffle. He declined for two reasons. First, that the role of parliament in the work of the executive is critical, especially matters relating to the finance and economy. It is his humble belief that he can better support the executive from parliament. And then secondly, he also intends to play a dedicated role in the crafting of the MPP's messages and governance strategies going forward and going into the 2024 general elections. And he considers that he is better placed to do so in a non-ministerial role of member of parliament. He does not state which role the president was considering him for, whether the finance ministry or any of the ministries that the president did some changes at. But he just says that for two reasons, he thinks that he can serve better the MPP from parliament and the government, and also he wants to play some role in the crafting of a message for 2024 election. And because of that, he feels he wants to stay in parliament, and that is why he declined uh, an appointment to go and serve in the executive again. But the most important question here is that we did not see his name anywhere. In the election. In the communication that yes. came from the president. And in fact, the president... So basis, is, he, is, he, is he responding to a matter that nobody is aware exactly. of? Exactly. Those concerns are, have been shared, that the president considers a wide array of people for ministerial appointments every now and then. Ultimately, he takes the final decision. If your name is not there, your name is not there. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's, 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 there's not been any case where people have been raising issues to say that, okay, Kukwatin has done this or that. And so, the, the, it, is, it is unclear what exactly this press statement is seeking to clarify. Mm -hmm. Because the president has taken his decision, he's done with that. And so, Kukwatin's statement is just trying to clarify something. But the question is, what exactly are you clarifying? And then finally, the, the, the second consideration of the anti lgbtiq bill, bill mm -hmm. when is it starting? The expectation was that it will continue today. In fact, yesterday when Honorable Afenyo Makin arrested the motion, the, the, the third reading, mm. they took one of his 14 amendments. First, to remove the, 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 the prison sentence that is imposed in the bill. That was voted and it was defeated. The expectation was that this morning would have been taken and because MPs have to travel out of Accra to the voter region for their workshop regarding the starting of this, it wasn't taken. Mm. But from all indications, the minority guys say this is something they are keen on. The Speaker of Parliament says is also keen on. And so the expectation is that on Tuesday, the rest of the 13 amendments proposed will all now be taken. A vote will happen. And then the Speaker will proceed to put the question on the third reading. And on Ghana Connect tonight? Ghana Connect, we are looking at the reshuffle that has come up. There are so many people who have viewed that it was too late in coming. Some say it wouldn't make any change. We are seeking the public's view. What do they think? Do they think this really make any changes? On this, we will probably also throw in Kuku Kwarteng's statement. Right. If you get him on, try and ask him some questions. I'm, I'm, what exactly I'm, I'm, I'm also to... seeing the name of mm. the chairman of the health committee also well, giving. Kuku, are you a free daddy? I mean, it's real appointment. And uh, it's it's people don't understand because exactly. in fact, in parliament, one one person that has been said was I in the health ministry for a long time was Dr. Kuku, are you a free? The president has make has made his changes. There's been no questions in parliament or outside of it as to who accepted or who did not reject. Because ultimately, the president makes his decisions. And when he makes that decision, finally, the official it, communication it, it's, it's sent with. to parliament. It's not up to people coming back and saying that they um, rejected I'm this or rejected that. Accepted. All right. So, yeah. so that's it. thank you very much, Kwaku, for uh, your time on the issues that happen in parliament this afternoon. Let's, stay, uh, let's move to the Ghana Journalist Association because the GJA has revoked the media blackout it imposed on the member of parliament for a Wutu senior is maybe so the decision was taken after the gj and its media partners met earlier today to review the blackout imposed on the mp who is also the minister of fisheries and agricultural development the imposition of blackout was meant to get justice for david Corbina, a morning show host of cape fm who was assaulted by thugs wearing branded t-shirts of the mp during the vetting of the mpp's parliamentary aspirants in the central region in cape coast in january 4 2024, and we have a chronology of events that led to the GGA's decision. First, the Ghana General Association, uh, as, as you may be aware, has lifted a, the media blackout imposed, of, uh, imposed on how our system uh, urging all media house to comply. So, meaning that from today on, onwards, the media is allowed to cover events, you know, uh, around Madam Howard Kumsem. And, uh, and that is the news this afternoon. Ms. Kumsem engaged. The DJ, according to their own statement that came out, national executives, 
accompanied by Minister Designate for Information, Fatima Abu Bakar, and other stakeholders. And they had a thorough discussion on the matter and came to this uh, conclusion. And the blackout was initially imposed following an assault incident during the vetting of MPP parliamentary aspirants in Cape Coast. Uh, Ms. Kumisin engaged with the GJA's national executives uh, together with the uh, folks from the Ministry of Information. Conclusion is that the embattled Minister of Fisheries will help to identify the individuals that assaulted the Cape FM morning show host and then for the, uh, for the security agencies to take it up and if need be prosecute them in accordance with law. So this is the, 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 the latest from uh, the Ghana Journalist Association. This is the pause here on Joy News. Uh, we'll take a short break and we'll be back.